Hi again, this is Greg Hughes, and in this video I want to show you some really cool tricks you can do with your images when using 90 Second Website Builder. Of course, as I said in an earlier video, one of the most common things you'll put on your website is either image or text. And so 90 Second Website Builder gives you a number of tools that allow you to make your images look their best. Now, whenever you're putting an image on a website, you want to make sure you're using a web-friendly image, of course. Those are images or files that end with extensions like JPG, sometimes it's JPG, PEG, JPEG, also a GIF or a PNG or a BMP. These are all web-friendly image files. Now BMPs are not as common because they're usually a lot larger file size, but mostly you'll use JPEGs and GIFs and PNGs. So it's important to know that when you're building a website, you need to use images that are web-friendly, and that's what those are. So we're going to be working with those kinds of images. And of course, to put an image on the website, I just need to get the image tool, which I'm going to do right now. Clicking on image, I'm going to draw a box. Of course, it doesn't matter where I draw my box because I'm going to be able to drag this into place later. That opens up the dialog for where I can find the image I'm going to work with. So I'm going to go down here and find a Houdini poster that I like. Before I click on this and select this image to put it on my web page, I want you to notice as I hover over it, Windows tells me some things about this file. One, that it's a JPEG. That's good. The other thing it tells me are the dimensions, 758 by 988. Now, that's a really large image as far as it's dimensions go. So 758 pixels by 988 pixels is almost as big as a web page itself. So it's going to be too big as far as the dimensions go. But the file size is something else. 147K, that's really not a very large image. If this was 2 megabytes or 3 megabytes, that'd be a pretty big image. And I might have trouble with it, depending on what else is on this page. But 147K, that's not really that big. So what's going to happen is when I put this image on my website, I can change the dimensions. And of course, changing the dimensions has no effect on the file size. And that's important to know. I'm going to select that image. And as you can see, yep, sure enough, it's way too big as far as the dimensions go. But that's okay because the image tool allows me to change the size of this by these little handles that appear in the corner. And you'll notice that when I grab any one of these, I can stretch it any direction up and down. If I grab this one, it, I can stretch it up and down. And of course, these allow me to stretch it side to side. But if I grab the image handle down in the bottom corner here, the right bottom corner, it has a unique attribute. It allows me to change the dimension of the image without changing its aspect ratio. So in other words, when I drag this, you'll notice it stays in its original aspect size, as opposed to, say, this one, which allows me to make it fat or whatever. So when I go to grab the bottom corner, it'll actually even reset the aspect ratio. Watch, I'll click on it, and you'll see it changed back to its original. So that's a really cool thing to know. I usually resize my images within their aspect ratio because they show better. If you do something like this or this, the image can get grainy and not look its best. So I like to use this bottom handle. Okay, so that's how we change the dimension. But again, changing the dimension did not change the file size. This is still 147K. So when my page loads, it's going to take 147K to load this particular image. Now, that happens to be reasonable. But again, if this was several megabytes, just changing the dimensions alone would not change that file size. That's important to know. Okay, so now let's talk about two other things about images. Some images are what are called transparent. And that's what this image is right here. In fact, it's why it looks so good up here in my little banner that I've made with a layer tool. This image actually has no background. And so no matter where I put it on my website, it just kind of sits on top of and shows whatever's behind it. Nice. So that's why it's great to put on anything. It'll pick up whatever... It just looks it looks great on just about anything because it has no background. I like using transparent images because they're just more versatile for that obvious reason. This is another transparent image. You can see the words through it because it has no background. So when you have transparent images, they're they're nice to use because of that. Obviously, this is not a transparent image because the whole image takes up all of the space of the image itself. Here, background doesn't really matter. It's a different kind of an image. So let me show you what happens when we're working with images that don't have a transparent background. So let's say, for example, I was building this website with this particular banner, and I wanted to use a different image right here, one that does not have a transparent background. Let me show you a cool trick I can do. So first, I'm going to double-click on this image to change it. 
Double clicking brings up the image properties and shows me the path to where this image came from. If I click on this little folder, I can go to that path and get a different image. I'm going to use one that's similar, but it's not transparent. It's this one right here. It's also a magic hat. I'm going to click OK or open. Now I've got a new image. Well, there's a couple of problems with this image already. It's too big for my banner, my layer. So I could increase the size of my banner to make this fit. Or I think what I might do is decrease the size of this image. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit like this so that it fits inside my banner better. But the problem is it's not transparent and so it just doesn't look right with this gold orange on top of the blue. Well, here's a couple of things I can do. First of all, let me move this out of the way for now. We'll talk about that later. And let's move this navigation out of the way for just a minute so we can just talk about what's happening here. One of the things I can do when I have an image that has its own background that I can't change, I can always change the background of the object it's on top of to make it look better. So in this case, I'm going to double click on my layer, which is my background, and I'm going to change the background color to match this image. So I go to Style. And as you can see right now, my background has a sort of black and blue gradient. I'm going to change it to be a solid color. And now I'm going to change what that color is by going here, down to More Colors. I have an eyedropper tool called the Select tool. I'm going to click on it and go pick up a color from the image itself right here. I'm going to pick up this sort of golden orange. By the way, as I hover my, my uh, eyedropper over the image, you can see over in this window over here, it shows me the color that I'm picking up. So I want this one right here, this the darker edge of the image, the orange gold. I click on it, and I've now picked up this color. This is the color that will be in my layer tool, my background. Click OK. There it is. I'm going to click OK. And now you can see I've just simply changed the color of the background that this image sits on. So now it flows a little bit better. It looks like it's supposed to be part of it. And I can make some adjustments. I can bump this up a little bit here to kind of get rid of that line. I could even maybe bump this up against the image here, clean it up just a little bit. Then I'll go grab the text that I had, put it here. I could even move it over against the hat. And let's see, I had some navigation, so just make those adjustments. But the point is, I can take an image that hmm, maybe doesn't look as great because it's not transparent, and just simply change what it's next to or what it's on top of to make it look better. By the way, you'll notice when I reduce the image, this image got kind of grainy. You see how it's kind of pixelated here? Well, not to worry, because if you want to see what that image is really going to look like, all you have to do is hit F5 to preview it. And you'll see that once it's online, it's actually going to be nice and smooth. The software will take care of that for you. But in design mode, sometimes an image will look a little bit bumpy. If you are worried about that, just hit F5 to preview it and see how it's going to smooth out. So that's one way to work with an image that doesn't have a transparent background. Now let's talk about some special effects that you can add to your images in 90 Second Website Builder. Some really cool things. So here I've got this Houdini poster. And I could do some things like, I'm going to double click on it. I could do some things that really kind of make it pop and make it stand out on my website a little bit better. One of the things I like to do is add reflection. So I'm going to type in the number 50 to determine the amount of reflection. So in other words, that's about 50% reflection. I can make that reflection be completely opaque or transparent based on these numbers. And I'll just leave it like that and show you what happens when I click OK. You see we've created this little mirrored reflection. Let me click away from it this little mirrored reflection of the image, and it just adds some dimension to it that it didn't have. It makes it kind of stand out on the website. It's a great, great little fast and easy thing to use to make your website look better. Here's another thing I could do. I'm going to double click on it and bring up the image properties again. I'll leave the reflection, but I'm also going to add an effect. Um, let's add some shadowing. So I'm going to enable the shadow, and I'm going to offset it by, oh, let's say about five pixels. You can decide on this. The color of the shadow, we'll leave it black. We'll make it completely opaque. And we'll make it, uh, well, let's make it about a little blurrier than 10. So now I'm going to have a blurry shadow behind my image, offset by 5 pixels when I click OK. And here it is. You can see I've got this nice little blurry shadow. It gives the image, uh, again, a three-dimensional look. And then with this reflection, I've really been able to add some special effect to my website and to the image itself. So that's kind of fun. Let me show you a couple of others and then I'll let you play because I can't show you every possible effect. Obviously that would take days because there's so many options. But let me show you one other thing. I'm going to grab the image tool again and let's go get another big picture. I've got another Houdini poster here that looks like this, kind of a famous picture. Again, it's too big. 
So I'm going to shrink it down. And just to review, remember this tool shrinks it in, in both directions like this. And the bottom right keeps the aspect ratio, which is what I want. I'm going to use this image and I'll leave it up here at the top of the screen so you can see it in the camera a little bit better. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to bring up the image properties. This time I'm going to add some special effects down here in the effects area. I can add a number of different things. Now there are so many effects. Again, I can't show them all to you, but I'm going to show you a couple. I'm going to move this properties window way up here because of the way the camera works. So you can see what happens. If I wanted to add an effect, I would click add. These are all different categories of effects. And as you can see, as I hover over them, they bring up other effects that I could use. So for example, under artistic, I might want to choose old movie. That'll make the picture look a little bit more like an old movie. So I click that and it gives me a little preview. In fact, I can even adjust the brightness and the distortion of this effect. This gives me a preview of what it's going to look like. Let's keep it that way. I click OK. So you can see I've added the effect old movie to my image. I click OK and sure enough, there it is. It looks a little bit older. But let's do that again because you can also add additional effects. You don't have to just use one at a time. So we've got the old movie effect, but I'm also going to add, say, I don't know, old photo to that. So let's put old photo. And again, I can adjust the value of that if I want to. Now I've got two effects, old movie and old photo. And you can see, yeah, it starts to look a little bit more like an aged poster. Let's add one more thing here. I've got old movie, old photo. And let's add one more thing. How about we soften the edges here? Let me move this up so you can see where I'm going. I'm going to go to add under other. There's one called soft edges. And again, I can adjust this. Let's make them really soft. Change it to 25. Click OK. Now I've got three effects on this image. Click OK. And let's see what happens. If you, if you look around the edge here carefully, you can see it has softened the image. It sort of looks like a little bit of a glow. So those three effects create this particular look, which I like and then I can change the dimension. So anyway, that gives you an idea of the number of things that you can do with your images. So as you learn to use the software, also play with those and experiment and see what those things do. You're also gonna learn that as you start putting images on top of your uh, page and things are on top of others, you know, this image is now on top of this one and this is on top of this one. You're gonna wanna learn how to arrange. I've got a separate video about that, but it's something that happens a lot when you're working with images. You're gonna wanna know how to arrange things. Just go up to the Arrange Tools and you can move things around by moving them to the front or to the back. So for example, you'll notice my text here is actually hiding behind this picture. Well, that's a problem. So I would just go up to the arrange and move to the front and there it is. Now it's back on top. Just a common thing to do as you're working with images and text. Okay. So that gives you a, a head start. So you can play with that image tool and play with those effects and make your images really look great. Make them pop out on the screen to make your website look the best it can while you're using 90 second website builder.